morning, everybody. Once again, Dr. Salim is here with you guys. Uh, let's uh, continuously uh, look for the SPI review registry exam questions. Uh, be with me and let me share the exam questions with you guys, the practice exam. Let me see this. Okay, I hope you guys can see the questions. Okay, so the question is, we scan a common carotid artery with a pulse wave ultrasound. Uh, what would be the period of waveform if the time to complete one pulse, it take 50 microseconds? And there are two cycles per pulse. I think it's a really easiest question. So what do you think? Which one is the correct answer? 50 microseconds, 25 microseconds, 50 seconds, 100 microseconds, or 52 microseconds? What do you think? You're right. Because... There are two cycles in a pulse and the whole pulse is taking 50 microseconds. So one will take just 25 microseconds. That is the correct answer. B is the correct answer. Good job. Let's go to the next question. Okay. It is asking that we scan dorsalis pedis artery. What would be the period of a waveform if the time to complete one pulse take 25 microseconds and there are only one cycle per pulse? So what do you think? How much time will be taken by that one pulse, by that one cycle? Exactly, exactly. That will be 25 because if the pulse is made of one cycle in itself, the pulse is 25 microseconds and it's just made of one cycle. So that, that time, we call it that time or that period, that is actually 25. So A is the correct answer. Good job. Maybe they may ask you these like, easy questions. Okay, now, if they can ask you this question. In an ultrasound wave, listening time is as known as which of the five? Like, what are the other names for the listening time in a wave farm? So, reception time, off time, dead time, all of the above, none of the above. What do you think? Yes, you're right. Three of them are the correct because they are alternative names for that listening time actually in a wave form. So all of the above is the correct answer. Good job. Okay, let's see this question, true and false. The listening time in a wave is the area where the image creation is happening. Like, is this definition true or false? What do you think? Yes, that is true. Because that is the area the machine is listening for the echoes to come back. So that's the returning of the echoes, that, that dead area, that off time area where the machine is not sending. There is no uh, pulses in the transmission. It's the reception time. So true is the correct answer. Uh, let's do this measurement question. The time measurement to complete one pulse is 30 microseconds. And the time measurement from the beginning of the pulse to the beginning of the next pulse, it is 120 microseconds. Now, calculate the listening time for this pulse. These are the options. 150 microseconds, 3,600 microseconds, 90 microseconds, 4 microseconds, 0 0.25 microseconds. What do you think? Let me make it easy for you guys. Because in question, actually, it's asking that the PD is 30 microseconds. And PRP, pulse repetition period, that is 120. Now, calculate the listening time. Now it's more easier. Exactly. PRP is the whole calculation for PD and listening time. If you take the PD out of this PRP, if PRP is 120, so take 30 out of it, the rest is the listening time. So that will be 90 microseconds. Good job. Let's go for the next question. Okay. So it is asking that if pulse duration is 10 microseconds and pulse repetition period, PRP, is 90 microseconds. Calculate the listening time for this uh, pulse. So again, simple and easy question. If your total PRP is 90 from the beginning of the pulse to the beginning of the next pulse, so this whole thing is 90 microseconds. Only by the, the PD is 10, 10 microseconds. So to, to calculate the listening time, it's the same like we just we did the previous exam and the previous test uh, question. Exactly, you're right. The correct answer will be 80 microseconds, correct? So just take 10 out of the 90 and that's the listening time because 
PRP is the, actually, it is the creation of both the PD and the same time. Good job. Let's do the next question. Okay. Now, choose the correct formula from the following ones for the listening time uh, calculation of a pulse wave. Like, what is the correct formula for listening uh, time to calculate it, to figure out? So, what do you think? LT is equal to PD plus PRP. LT is equal to PRP minus PD. LT is equal to PRP divided by um, PRP divided by PD. LT or listening time is equal to PD divided by PRP or LT is equal to PD at the power of two. What do you think? Which one is the best option? Yes, you're right. LT is equal to PRP minus PD because PRP is the beginning of, uh, that's the beginning of the pulse to the beginning of the next pulse. So that's the whole thing is PRP. Just take PD out and you will get the listening. All right. Okay, next question. The length measurement of a cycle, like this is a definition question. What does it call if we do the length of a complete cycle measurement? What is the name of it? What it called? Is it wavelength? Is it the pulse duration? Is it the SPL? Is it the frequency? Is it the period? What do you think? One cycle. If it's a complete cycle, the compression and refraction, the length measurement of this, what it is called? You're right. That is called wavelength is the correct answer. Absolutely correct. Good job. Next question. Okay. Choose formula to calculate the measurement of one cycle. Like, what is the correct formula to calculate for the wavelength or lambda? So we can say lambda is equal to propagation speed of the sound divided by frequency. Lambda is equal to SPL divided by N, uh, A in B, none of the above. What do you think which one is the correct answer? Yes, you're right. This was easy question. Both. This one, lambda is equal to propagation speed of the sound divided by operating frequency, and also lambda is equal to SPL divided by N. N is the number of cycles in a pulse. And SPL is the special pulse length, the whole pulse length that is got. So C is the correct answer because both of them are correct. Okay, next question. What, which of the following is the correct unit for wavelength measurement? Yeah, this is a very easy question. Which of the following is the, the most common used uh, measurement unit for the wavelength or lambda? What do you think? Hertz, second and milliseconds, Celsius or centigrade, uh, millimeter or microsecond? Yes, this was easy. D is the correct answer. The most common is millimeter. Some books also say centimeter, but anyway, we don't have that option in this uh, question. So we're good that millimeter is the correct answer. Now, calculate the wavelength of five megahertz transducer. So what do you think? Because first of all, we should know the formula, correct? There are two formulas for the calculation of the wavelength, correct? One was SPL divided by N. N was the number of cycles, just we did it earlier. And the other one was um, propagation speed of the sound divided by the operating frequency. So that's the only one to be used propagation speed divided by the operating frequency because we have operating frequency in our question. So what do you think, which one will be the correct answer? I will make it easier for more. So we can divide it 1.54, which is the propagation speed of the sound, that's a constant, divided by the five megahertz. So now 1.54 divided by five. And I believe that will be 0 0.308. I know you have two numbers, but why I'm selecting B, because the, the, the measurement for the wavelength is not hertz, that's the millimeter. So that's the correct answer. If you do that calculation, that will also give you a millimeter at the end. Okay, next question. Calculate the wavelength of a 10 megahertz transducer. Same question, just we did earlier. So what do you think? If you do 1.54, millimeter and a microsecond divided by the 10 megahertz. So the other form of the megahertz is to write it one or microsecond, just to make it easier. So exactly same thing. So 1.54 divided by 10, I believe this will be the correct answer. 0 0.154 millimeter, correct. Let's do the next question. Okay, now look at this question. This question. 
We use a pulse wave ultrasound to scan patients' anatomy. Somewhere in the body, just you scan. The special pulse length, SPL, was measuring four millimeter. And there were two cycles per pulse. What would be the wavelength of this wave arm? So what do you think, what will be the lambda? How much will be one cycle's length? Mm -hmm. You have four millimeter, you have eight millimeter, you have two millimeter, you have eight millimeter in a microsecond, you have four millimeter in a microsecond. What do you think, which one is the correct answer? Remember, we had a formula earlier, just we say that. SPL divided by N, N was the number of cycles. So SPL here is four millimeter. And the number of cycles are two, four divided by two, I believe that C will be the correct answer, right? Four divided by two is the two. That will be the result. Good job. Okay, next question. Which of the following is the correct formula for SPL, special pulse length? Like the whole pulse length, how much is that? Where the cycles are happening in the transmission? So how much calculation? Now, if we look, SPL is equal to lambda divided by N, SPL is equal to uh, C or propagation speed of the sound divided by operating frequency SPL is equal to lambda or wavelength times the number of cycles. SPL is equal to lambda divided by two. SPL is equal to operating frequency, uh, sorry, uh, propagation speed of the sound divided by lambda. What do you think, which one is the correct answer? Just I mentioned it earlier too. Yes, that is the correct answer, C. We can say number of cycles times lambda. Lambda is one cycle's length, and n is the number of cycles. If you know one one cycle's length, and you know the number, how many cycles are there in this pulse? So they are multiplied with each other. Correct answer is the C. Okay, let's keep going to the next one. Okay, now calculate SPL of a transducer which generate three cycles of purples in each cycle measure three millimeters. This is now more easier because you can have a formula here in the above question <laughs> and this question will be a lot easier. Of course, it's a nine millimeter because your SPL, your, your, uh, SPL is here. Lambda is a three millimeter and there are three cycles. So three times three is nine, correct. Let's do the next question. Okay. Now, this question is asking that, calculate SPL of four megahertz probe, which generate two cycles per pulse in each cycle measure two millimeter. So again, the same above formula, that's the only formula we have. SPL is equal to lambda wavelength times N. N is the number of cycles. So here we have two times two, and that will be four millimeter. That is the correct answer. Okay, now next question. Okay, the range, this is a definition question. Like, what do you think this definition goes to which of the following options? The range of useful frequencies that are created in a short pulse is called. So what is this definition suitable for any of these one? Is it called harmonic frequency? Is it a bandwidth? Is it an artifact? Is it a pulse repetition period or PRP? Or is it a quality factor? Which one is going to be the definition, this definition is going to be one of these one. Which one is the correct answer? Yes, you're absolutely correct. B is the correct answer. That's called bandwidth, correct. Okay, now let's do another question about the bandwidth. What is the most common cause of short pulses creation in a transition? Like what causes? How we can make a, pul a pulse to be more shorter, like less cycles are there in that. So how you can make it less number of cycles in a pulse. Is it because of damping material? Is it because of backing material? Is it because of both of them? Is it because of none of them, something else? What do you think? Yes, that is correct answer. Both of them, damping material and backing material, they are behind the crystal. It's like a metal powder. So they make the continuous sound when they're coming, they make it one, one pulse. So they make it shorter. The more damping backing material in the back of the transducer, the higher the frequency and the less, the shorter the pulse will be created. Less number of cycles will be there, correct. So both of them are correct. Now, number 19. Uh, it says pulse wave ultrasound will have what type of bandwidth? Like we have two type of ultrasound. One is continuous wave ultrasound, one is pulse wave ultrasound. 
So would you think the bandwidth for pulse-wave ultrasound is which of the following option will be more suitable or correct for them? Is it shorter bandwidth? Is it wider bandwidth? Is it non -re not related at all? Is it all of the above? What do you think? Yes, it will have, it will create a wider bandwidth because short pulses will go the whole area, go everywhere. They're not only just going to one spot. They will go to whole feet. So it's a wider bandwidth that will give. Okay, perfect. Now let's do the final question. The last but not the least. Okay, which of the following is a good example of narrow bandwidth? So, now this is more easier question because wider bandwidth was for pulse wave ultrasound. So of course, narrow bandwidth will be for the continuous wave ultrasound because it will just target one point and that's it. They are not having wider bandwidth. So that is the correct answer, continuous wave ultrasound. Okay, thanks a lot once again. And uh, please uh, let me know how we can make this series uh, or this system more better because later you will have a lot of questions. So right now we just did it 120 questions so far, but uh, I'm trying to make it 1000 questions. So it's a long journey, but I'm trying to make it every day one test for you guys or just to explain it a little bit. But please do not forget to subscribe the channel and let the others also know those who may sit for the any of the registry examinations or not, but these are important for them to know if you are in this radiology department, especially if you do these imaging with the sonography, then please just uh, share the channel with them and let them to subscribe also. Take care and have a nice day. Please wait for the upcoming more videos. Take care, take, take care and see you later.